welcome to the thermal systems design class in today's lectures we will primarily go over the key objective of this particular class before taking this course you have taken several uh, courses uh, in, in our thermal system or thermal fluid track you started with intro to thermal fluid sciences then you took uh, fluid mechanics thermodynamics you also have a thermal fluid laboratory so the key objective of this particular course is to uh, extract information from those courses and use them to produce effective design and uh, uh, today I'll show you that how we can do it a and then also the layout the whole plan for this particular class so let's say that uh, you have been asked to design or you are trying to design a a plate type uh, heater uh, for time being uh, let's consider that it is a electrically heated plate uh, and the purpose of this plate heater is uh, to heat a stream of air and uh, let's consider it's coming with a velocity of 2 meter per second with the velocity with a temperature inlet temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and your goal is to heat this uh, stream of air to a temperature of 75 degrees Celsius obviously you can uh, draw your knowledge from your thermodynamics class and readily calculate that what amount of heat or what should be the capacity of the heater which is simply uh, the total heat required to heat the air or uh, the rate of heat we need is uh, m cp delta t in this case delta t is your outlet steam temperature minus inlet temperature you can calculate cp from the thermodynamic properties uh, data tables and you have that uh, the back of your book or any thermodynamics or heat transfer book and you'll evaluate the CP as an average temperature of uh, inlet and outlet now how to calculate uh, you, you can actually say uh, the mass flow rate or then it, how do you calculate the mass flow rate not very difficult you can draw your knowledge from your fluid mechanics class and using the continuity equation and so mass flow rate is density the cross-sectional area or cross-sectional area to the flow I will put a C for and, and the velocity itself and, and this particular case the velocity I'm considering is the area average velocity so and uh, again the density needs to be calculated at the same temperature of your other properties with that of course you can calculate m and definitely that will allow you to calculate the total uh, total heat required to heat this uh, stream of air but the larger question or the the larger aspect of design to actually size this heater what would be the length of the heater how long i need the heater should be or even in some cases what should be the weight actually you can uh, vary you know you can say that you can define surface area and then decide either length or width so you can as long as you can able to calculate the surface area you can do length or weight whichever we want how do you do that how do you calculate the surface area required to hit this flow Obviously, you have knowledge from your heat transfer class to do that. Uh, if you recall that the type of heat transfer or uh, the mode of heat transfer involved in this process is convection. It is actually forced convection because you are forcing the air flowing over the plate. It's not The velocity is not generated by buoyancy difference and also this is an external force convection so you have the flow has a boundary or a wall in one side and but the other side is free so this is the force convection process and if you recall 
for, for forced convection of a flat plate, uh, you can estimate the heat transfer. Uh, and obviously, if you recall, the, equ the equation is uh, a heat transfer coefficient, in this case, a, a convective heat transfer coefficient, surface area, and the surface temperature of the plate minus the ambient temperature or the free stream temperature. Obviously, in this case, the free, free stream temperature is changing over the plate because that's how, how it's getting heated up. And the surface temperature, since if you fix the Q for the plate, then as the air flowing over the plate, you know, the surface temperature will not be constant. So this problem may appear in two different ways. In one case, you want to maintain constant surface temperature. In other case, you have a uh, rated, you have a, 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 a heater, in that case, your surface temperature will change. Uh, in, in that case, you really like to know the surface temperature in any location of the plate so that the plate doesn't melt. Uh, so anyway, so you will have an option to, to get the surface temperature. Uh, so, so, if you ha so you have Q and you can, you can calculate the surface temperature uh, if you can estimate the value of uh, the convective heat transfer coefficient. Or, and then you can iteratively change the surface area and TS and, and, and try to tune your design. So the question is how you evaluate age. You know, that's the, the goal, right? So if you recall that this type of flow, there is a model that you can use, okay? In this case, Nassau number, we define a non-dimensional number which is actually heat transfer, convective heat transfer coefficient and any characteristic dimension and in this case I'll just put the dimension length over the thermal conductivity. Please remember that this, this uh, thermal conductivity values has to be uh, evaluated in a film temperature which is surface temperature plus ambient temperature over 2. In this case, ambient temperature is, uh, you can use an average ambient, uh, average free stream temperature if you want to. Uh, this Nassau number act technically is a function of, and we have proven again and again, is a function of uh, Reynolds, no Reynolds number and Prandtl's number. And you can also calculate local Nassau number since this heat transfer, uh, rate of heat transfer will change along the plate. So the no local Nassau number is defined is a function of the length of any location of the plane, local Reynolds number, and the Prandtl's number. But anyway, let's consider this. So, uh, so the various model exists. So, a very common expression of Nassau number. Uh, again, remember Nassau number is H L over K, is C, Reynolds number to the power m, and Prandtl's number to the power n. So if you know the value of C, M, and N, you should be able to calculate. Obviously, you also have to calculate Reynolds number, which is not very difficult. You know the velocity, you know the characteristic dimension and viscosity, and you should be able to calculate Reynolds number. And the Prandtl's number, you can use the same film temperature and get the Prandtl's number value from, from the properties of thermodynamic data table. So the C, M, and N, uh, you have some information of C, M, and N, okay? Uh, so I'll just refer to your uh, heat transfer. Uh, let me minimize this. Uh, in a heat transfer book, and if you, if you look at it, that uh, you can see that the, those, those models exist, and some of them are actually an analytical solution of the governing equations, and we'll look into it. Some of them are actually empirical values that people did a lot of measurements and compiled the data. And you can see the val this is the value of C, this is the value of M, this is the value of N. So once you know all those things, you should be able to calculate the value of uh, H. So if you know the, so if by knowing the C, M, and N, and you should be able to calculate the value of Nassau number, uh, and then, uh, and you can actually plug this in over here in terms of AS, and then you can calculate the surface area you need, and then figure out what L and W you like to have. So this is the design process. So obviously, using the the tools you already know, you can or have, you can design this uh, plate type uh, header without any problem. But the problem is that this model 
and the estimation of age is not fully uh, 100% accurate. If you are, uh, if some, if the laminar flow situation where those uh, relationships are derived from a simplified solution of Navier-Stokes equation, uh, there are a lot of approximations uh, there before we can actually solve those equations. And if there's an empirical data, obviously there are experimental uncertainties and a lot of uh, variation in the data. So if you attempt to do this, there may be a error between 15 to 20 percent in estimating the length or width of this plate. Obviously, it will work, okay? Most likely, you will end up over-designing this. The problem is that if in this competitive market, if you're trying to bring a product to the market, it has to be highly optimized because that will reduce your product costs and they'll make the product more attractive to the customer. So this tool is inadequate to really give you the optimized design you want to produce. So then how do you produce an optimized design? So once you know this, the most likely what you'll do, you'll actually design an experiment. So you will go through a path called uh, experimental approach. And uh, in heat transfer, in thermofluid lab, you did a lot of experiment and, and develop some understanding that how experiments uh, work. So most likely you will do an experiment based on the initial design and, type and measure the temperature, surface temperature, uh, the outlet temperature and try to figure out what is the length you can tolerate. So all sort of consideration you can do to really finally optimize the length. Um, so that is a really very common approach. Only issue is that experiments are expensive and it also is time consuming and most, ex most experiments are specific to a certain design conditions. So, so also it delay the process of bringing the product in the market. So all those considerations uh, makes experimental approach a little difficult, but then in many cases, that's the only options we have. So over the last 10, 15 years, uh, one of the design tools are quickly evolving, which is called computational fluid dynamics. So before I talk about, uh, and, uh, in brief, it's called CFD, computational fluid dynamics, okay? So that means some computation involved, and let's see what it is, okay? so. Uh, so if you if you look at that that problem and you see that the fluid the, the flow over this particular plate is governed by a set of equations you have a continuity equation you have three momentum equation and energy equation now, and how do they really look like okay so uh, I will try to uh, show you that equations so um, so these are the equations okay so this is the and I, I'm showing in a different configuration this is the Cartesian rectangular coordinate uh, cylindrical and you can see this is the X momentum equation Y momentum equation Z momentum equation you also have the continuity equation and you also have the the energy equation okay so if you can solve these equations then obviously in any word in the plate, you should be able to get the velocity u, v, w, and the temperature everywhere in the plate because this is the governing equation. If you can solve it, then you have the solution and then you can use that, have a 100% optimized. The issue is that these are nonlinear partial differential equations and there is no solution exists for that. Together, they call navier Stokes equation. So you cannot really, really solve them. So if you cannot solve them, so what is what will be my option? So the new technique, the way CFD work, they took this equation, okay, and discretize them. The discretization technique is such a way that you take a differential and then write them in terms of an algebraic expression. So, so if this plates there, what you do, you uh, create a pseudo volume on top of it, just a computational volume, and then make very small, smaller cell in it, and for each cell you write this equation in algebraic form. So let's say you split or you divided that volume in one million cell. In one million cell, every cell you will be writing that equation in algebraic form. And each will connect it with each other, the next cell, the neighboring cell. That way you generate a one million equation and whatever the unknowns you have, and then simultaneously solve them. The problem is that 20 or 25 years ago, you didn't have a powerful enough computer to really bring this on your desktop so that you can use it as a design. So it, it was limited to research tool. But as the computers are getting faster and faster, now you can run this, this problem uh, you know, in, your, in your laptop. 
And that's what the CFD is all about. Rather than attempting a analytical solution, it try to get a solution at every points or whatever the points you want to identify. And as long as you have close enough grid size or those size of those small cells, you get a fairly good distribution of temperature and uh, the velocity. And then you, you can use that to uh, uh, to design that, design your system. See, it's a lot more, lot expensive and you can change things because you're sitting on your computer and modifying length, dimension and all sort of things and then uh, and design those things again it's very similar but then this numerical technique numerical technique ha they have some issues those those techniques have some issues and there are some uncertainty associated with it so it's not going to produce 100% so the trick is in most cases is that if there's a very complex design you d you actually eliminate a lot of uh, options by using cfd and then only do very limited amount of experiments in a fairly simple design like that, a CFD data may be more than adequate to design that. So, the goal of this class is very simple. Things you learn from your other classes, both analytical and experimental tools. And then in this class, we will also learn the CFD tools. And together, we're going to use this to design different thermal system components, okay? So this class will have uh, several design projects, including one final design project. Other design projects will more, more or less involve in uh, using both analytical and CFD tool. And there will be one, one project where you actually also be doing some experiment to validate the CFD result. And the final project involve a design build and test. So there will be some design requirements, so you're going to use all three tools to build a uh, build uh, or develop a design and then build and then test it so this is the whole uh, whole plan for this particular class okay thank you for uh, listening to me and i hope to uh, talk to you again soon okay thank you